so-called godlike cannon that he has, but we haven't yeah. seen it or any other champions in his pool. Exactly. That's one of the big factors that Ozone has coming into this is when they bring in Looper, it throws out the book of everyone scouting. Right. Because Ozone as a team has been very mid and bottom lane focused when they play with Ohm because Ohm generally plays, he's got the Shen or NASA style where he just right. plays a tank that can survive in lane and then he tries to make his impact later in the game with team fights and with overall team positioning. So you could kind of craft strategies around, oh, we just need to shut down Dadai or if we can get enough assassination, we'll be able to take down him. But then obviously when it was actually Vulcan who played that game. Looper, with, with his Singe play, kind of right. ran over them a little bit. They didn't have enough damage to take down the tanky Singe. It does give them that extra factor that they wanted to bring in, even though it didn't give them the victory over again. The only thing they changed within the lane was that bottom lane. They had Caitlyn and Zyra, and then I believe it was something Thresh and Vayne on another time. So it was that's the only thing they're mm -hmm. changing in that composition, and it's the reason why Gambit had such a strong go into the game at that comp. Maneski, I believe they're going to go with comfort picks for themselves because mm -hmm. that was Gambit idea, Gambit's idea going into this game. And I think you have to be extremely comfortable to play against a team that can really go outside their own box. Yeah, and we can also see that Shen and Elise are the ones that are locked right. in right now. So it obviously is a change. A lot of that has to do, obviously, with the bans that Maneski has chosen. There's no Singed available. Zed has actually been banned nine out of the ten games yesterday yep. in all of the group stages. And a lot of people actually argue that Dade has the best Zed in the world. People will obviously say Faker is the best Zed in the world, but it is an actual argument over there in Korea. So those are actually smart bans from Maneski. Yeah, absolutely. All the playmakers kind of stopped out of that one. Any any okay. sort of dives that would come in that would be a little bit too deep for Mineski to really handle. But they're looking like they have a team that can also potentially stop dives themselves. Maybe a little bit of that objective control if they know the lanes won't be as strong for them with the Nasus. Yeah, Mineski needs to have a lot go right for them in this game because their two games absolutely. yesterday did not look promising whatsoever. And with the Nasus and the vein, it'll depend very heavily where they send that Nasus, whether they have a almost objective-focused jungle team or a late-game scaling team, depending on if Nasus goes into the jungle or into the top lane. The vein as well is something new we're seeing from EXO. EXO was really, it's hard to have a standout player when you lose two games so soundly, but I'd say EXO was the standout player in that yeah, game. He performed. So he puts himself on a bit of a hyper carry like Vayne so he can kind of make more individual plays. I do like that choice. This does also direct the eyes of Samsung Galaxy though, or Samsung Ozone rather, to him. Knowing mm -hmm. that Vayne's there with all what else comes onto the board, there is safety in Ezreal and the Fiddle pickup, which you've seen a Fiddle come in here a few times, but he's really yeah. been matched up with the Corky. Yeah, we actually saw TG play a little bit of a chaotic Fiddle Sticks. He had a few flash autos that may or may not have re resulted in kills. I like the Fiddle pickup for Mana, though, especially against Devane right now. Yep. Need to have that three seconds of potential fear lockdown later in the game, especially if Exo is going to be the main threat on the Mineski team. So, obviously, Ozone making substantial changes coming into this game. The Ezreal pick in particular is very new for Imp. He has basically been a Vayne and Caitlyn player. And the Ezreal, since it's not an auto attack reliant AD carry, is a bit of a switch up for him. It looks like they want this rise away from Dade, playing that twice in a row, and it faltered for him. So maybe mm -hmm. they're saying that you may saw that. He knows that the skill is there for him, and he can outplay Dade on this one. His Zed is yeah. gone. That champion pool is something that the analyst desk was talking about for Dada. Yeah, and this is where he was going to swoop in and pick the Ari against him, <laughs> yeah. but they banned it themselves, yep. so they're not able to. This well means, played there. Yeah, this means Dade has to challenge his champion pool. Jace used to be one of his big picks. That's a lot of AD on one team. Absolutely right there. That's a heavy AD focused team. They have a bit magic damage coming up from Dandy's jungle release, but once again, this is not showing really huge adaptation from Dade. This is just defaulting back to things that used to be good mm -hmm. for him. Against Ryze, he should be able to bully him fairly heavily early in that mid lane, and it's meaning Dade is just trying to adapt now. Well, we'll have to see. Dandy could be giving him quite a bit of help here. We know those two are always to work together in that pair. His teamwork is OP, but it is going to be somewhat of that Bash Brothers team of the objective mm -hmm. control. Renassus and Nectin coming out from Mineski, so they have a bit of their eggs put in the basket of being able to win middle phase of the game, and then they have that vein for the late. Yeah, so Mineski's team overall is just all about sustained damage. Right. Renekton, Nasus, Rise, Vein, all those guys, if they get spiked out in a fight or if they get overpoked, it's not a good thing. So Ozone, if they 
can keep a gold lead should be completely fine in this game. All right. While the teams are spawning into the rift, let's see who you picked to win this match. According to LOLesports.com, 86% of you think that Samsung Galaxy Ozone will protect their Nexus and come away with the win. And that's also what our casters picked as well. Yeah, this is not a game that many people will argue with on the predictions for. Even though Ozone was 1-1 one one yesterday and technically Mineski was only 0-2, the way in which the games were played and the expectations coming into this tournament and the World Championship, yep. obviously, just it makes it a bit of a, a landslide as far as the voting is concerned. And actually, you could see there on the camera that was Mata sitting in the chair. His jacket was shaking. They're just kind of tapping the leg. Mm -hmm. Everybody's nerves are kind of at that perfect point right now where they just want to get into the game and get everything ready. And that's exactly where we are at here at the studios. We are going to be live from Los Angeles, and we are on to the riff. Rivington to Jack to bring you Mineski versus Samsung Galaxy Ozone, our first game here at a Group B on Day 2 of Worlds. All right, then. So let's actually talk about this Ozone composition a little bit more. They definitely have huge amounts of poke potential and push potential. The mid lane Jace back when it was strong, was all about the tier of the Goddess Rush to as quickly as he could get his Muramana. It was just a moment in the game where he became immensely strong and a team would group and just try and push down turrets. Dot is going to be trying to do the same thing in this game as they're actually able to pick off that ward very yeah. early on. That's actually That's a ward kill that merits a bit of cheering because it's difficult to get everyone in that spot at that moment in the game. But to talk about Dade a little bit more, <laughs> it's really... He couldn't That's get one it. hell of an Explorer ward. Yeah. Yeah, Dade needs to be able to get going early in this game, and I'm expecting some early grouping from Ozone. A double Doran start here. Dade looking to do some damage. We'll see what actually he goes to, because it does not look like we are going to get standard lanes as they mill about the map to begin this one. A good line of scrimmage set up by both teams, though. Neither really want to partake in any engagements here. Yeah, not really deep wards either from the teams. They're not looking to invade each other. It is a Thresh. Shen and Fiddlesticks, plus even a Rise. Like, there's a lot of things that if a team were to invade straight into, it would potentially result in death. Not be good. No, that would be a bad <laughs> thing. And I do like that Ozone is playing this conservatively because they have done their scouting report here and they know that they can just outplay Mineski, assuming nothing goes terribly wrong. They play the 1-2-1 one, one possibly is what we're going to see. Looks like that it will be Imp and Mata taking that mid lane. You may. Not the worst in the short lane, but he is going to have a little bit more trouble now. So here's actually, yeah, Dade in the top lane against Snoy, taking Jace top, and then they're just going to 2v1 push down the mid, and that's why we're seeing a lane swap from Yume as well, mm -hmm. because Mineski does not want to get into this, and honestly, the team that reacts to the lane swap oftentimes in mid lane will be slow there, so Imp and Mata right here should get the early level 2, and we have seen struggles, to say the least, from this Mineski bottom lane. TG has not been able to stay alive very well in these matches. I want to see how he does now against Imp and Mata, who are possibly the best bot lane here at the World Championships. Looper heading back, picking himself up a ward, took the Wolves by himself. This means Yume has been in that bottom lane soaking up experience, but he did get the camp. So they'll return to a 1v1 in the bottom, a 1v1 in the top, and now both teams putting two middle Ooh. exo very low on the bounce. That was a lot of silence hitting Exo back, and he basically has to go back to base straight away. That's not going to be an easy thing to recover. We need to track how far ahead Imp gets from Exo. When Ozone played Vulcan, Imp obliterated Zuna and Bloodwater in that lane as far as minion kills are concerned. It was 150 to 107 at one point, I think, and this is a start that may be even worse than that one. And that mid lane's rough. Heaven, you're not having a Thresh to sit in a brush. Oh, Ooh. Snoy. Level 2 to that top lane. Dane's right there. Level 3 is on to that level 2. The damage is big. He goes up for the repel. And it's going to be Snoy trying to get out of this one. Dundee. Oh, he gets himself wow. out. The Ignite wears off and they get out alive. Normally, you have to see a three man dive in order to take down a Renekton at level 2. But Dandy and Dade with that mid lane synergy taken to top lane were confident in their ability to execute that tower dive. We'll have to see, still going very hard on to GG Imp. Getting that damage down, the Ignite's there, he's gonna dive in! This is definitely gonna be a kill on him. No! He flashes the wall right before the auto attack can get out of the hands of Exo. And that is a ridiculous 
trade by Ozone there. That was dangerous, to say the least, but Ezreal and Imp was not scared of that. He brought Ignite on Ezreal, by the way, which is the thing that secured him the kill after he flashed back over the wall. Exo thought he could take Imp by coming in early to that, or coming back to that lane and having full health from having just shot, but they were completely wrong. Already, Samsung Galaxy throwing in the tiers here. We got one on Dade and one on Imp as well. So that Triforce isn't instantly coming out from Imp here on Ezreal. No, he might be going for the, I almost want to call it a throwback, even though it's only a couple months ago, <laughs> with the blue build Ezreal. Back to the 90s. Knowing that he got the first blood so early. Back to the 90s, yeah. <laughs> and he's so confident in his ability to beat this lane. Since he got the first blood, it means an early tier. They're going to go for the double tier, oh. probably 15 to 20 minute Muramana, double Muramana, and then just go from there for Ozone. Perfect amount of bullying going on in the top lane here by Dade. It's going to keep him up there, keep Snowy up there in that top lane and really keep Kaigu there if they want to continue that pressure. With two in the mid lane, they shouldn't have to pressure that too much. 3v2 there. I don't think it's going to be too good for him, but they have to figure out where to get around Samsung Galaxy or Ozone right now. Yeah. With those two kills, it's going to be big. So far, Kaigu has been nothing but farm, so this is his first gank, and there's already a dandy mm. counter gank ready and waiting. He's going to have to make a bit of a run, though. It's just Snowy is so low in his turret, it's not so much a gank as far as just a friendly hello. Yep, yeah. yeah. The Sight Stones, or not Sight Stones, rather, Spirit Stones coming out for the junglers just now, and we're going to see him soaking up experience for most of these lanes. And this is the first time in the world here we've actually seen the 1-2-1 one, one lane matchup with the AD carry and support mid. We've seen it a few times throughout the LCS from Dignitas, and it really just comes to a fruition of being able to pressure all those lanes at once. But mm -hmm. now that it's kind of fought against, we kind of just have the matched lanes, longer tower is going to be up. And it's exactly Ozone. It's exactly what Ozone's going to be trying to do, is push down all of these lanes as quickly as possible. As long as Mineski is back at their turrets, it will allow dandy counter-jungling opportunities. And that's just kind of textbook Ozone as far as map control goes. They just get control of their lanes, allow Dandy to make plays, and then starve you out of gold. Looper with a quick Negatron Cloak buy for himself in that lane. 32 to 28, so not too shabby there. Kaigu looking to clean up some wards, oh. and they get Mata on that one. Very well played there. It looks like Mata has forced to flash out the same way that Imp did earlier. They turn this one back around onto TG. 3 to 1 in the kills now. It's going to be Kaigu and Exo still somewhat pursuing, but they give up. So even though Mata got hooked and seemed like it was Doom again for Ozone, they did manage to get a kill back to yeah. Imp. That's two kills now onto Imp. And even though he died from that, he's looking scary in this game. You do not want Imp to get farmed if you're against Ozone. Well, he's off the map right now. Exo doing what he can to pretty much freeze this one. Not trying to push it too far up. Dandy's soaking up all that experience. Everybody now leaving the base of Mineski to come back to lanes. And they are not. They are going to switch it up, actually. Renekton now to the bottom as Snowy takes it up against Looper. And they match up against Dade in the top lane on Jace. This is a little bit strange because Dade was doing such a great job against Snowy. And even though Ryze has seen some top lane time since we've seen Ryze in this tournament, it's been more of a mid laner. I almost feel like this is just a, an attempt to slow down Dade's farm in the slightest. They don't think he's going to be able to bully Ryze as well as he was bullying Renekton, but if that lane pushes out at all for Yumei, he's incredibly vulnerable to ganks yep. from Elise, and that's why top lane rise is always a bit of a risk. And something to look at that Mineski was not doing yesterday, and maybe they've taken from watching, is they are now bringing in the pink wards. Pink ward for Snowy, a pink ward as well, obviously TG, but more coming out. Ke Kegu, or Kaigu, rather, just buying one. Really reminiscent of the Korean play that we've seen here at Worlds. Yeah, you have to fight pink wards with more pink wards if you want to compete in this game. Oftentimes, these teams actually dump immense amount of golds into it. I think a little bit too much, and that might be something Wineski's doing here because buying pink wards is one thing, but placing them in the right spot right. to get your control back is another. And the team that is ahead always has the pink ward advantage inherently since they are the stronger team, and if you try to counter ward, you are risking getting caught and dying. They only have the movement on this. It looks like they're trying to thwart whoever's going to come over. You know, the top lane is gone a little bit too late on the war. Dandy had the idea, though. He had the idea, but he should have warded much earlier. Knowing that Ryze was in the top lane, he should have been trying to cut him off because there's no way Exo or TG right. were going to go in for that. And the spot with which Dandy was standing is a spot where a mid laner would actually come over to get blue buffs. So he kind of missed an opportunity there. 
And that stand United is up, but I feel it's go. Oh, Moa's Kaigu from the backside here. Dandy finding oh, him out. out. It's going to be a 3v1 just on the other side. It's TG next, though. TG puts himself in the middle. He does have his ultimate, but he doesn't decide to throw it in the box until he's farther out of the fight there. Vineski going down on that one pretty hard, but Galaxy losing one as well. That's exactly what we were just talking about. You can fight pink wards with pink wards, but you have to be able to use them properly. They tried to be safe there with TG throwing in the Thresh Lantern so Kaigu could get out of there, but the Lantern wore off. Ozone just decided to pounce on them and they maintain control and essentially get paid off for those pink wards and a turret afterwards. Constant pressure towards that mid and top lane coming in here from Dandy, making sure that Kaigu always has something to think about. And it's so far working at five to two for Galax or for Ozone, 14 and a half to 12K right now. And oh no for the difference between Exo and Imp right now. 4-1 versus 0-2, and it's nearly 4,000 gold to just 2,300. That is completely unfair for Exo right now because he is not going to be able to deal with Imp. No matter what, Imp's build is actually progressing very slowly. He's building a bunch of components right now. A Vamp Scepter generally doesn't give you immediate power in lane. The tier needs about 20 minutes, and it needs to be transformed into a Man Immune as well to get effectiveness. But Imp is just so confident in himself and his team that he doesn't care that his build is progressing slowly yeah. because he knows the moment in time that he is going to hit those items and yeah. complete them, and he's just getting them all. And it's almost scary to be a Vayne that's behind because people almost know that third bolt is what they're looking for. You have so much more time to fight a vein that's low HP, knowing that third bolt's the damage. Hit me with everything before that. And Imp, more than happy to take the fight. But putting himself in the bottom lane now. They're yeah. going to let him farm away. And Imp knows a thing or two about Vayne, so he should be yeah. able to handle Exo. <laughs> Imp is definitely the most famous vein in all of Korean League of Legends here. I don't know about the world. We'll have to have an argument about that. See what Doublelift has to think, Double of, think exactly. about it. Double lift. But there's a big dragon for Ozone. They're definitely pulling ahead in this one. And this is just how much trouble Snoy is in. Imp, the AD carry who has been in the dual lane most of the game, is nearly going for kills right now. In fact, Mineski's trying to set up a counter gank, and at one point, Kaigu just decides to show himself. A lot of safety there, getting back out. Kaigu trying to go for the wither, but there was no follow from Yume, no follow from Snoy. Why? Because Dandy is on the backside. The movement from Dade, they are all rotating to correct any situation Mineski is trying to put forth. Yeah, this is going very badly for Mineski. Even though they've gotten two kills, this is not that much different from the other two losses. They're trying to make a few plays right now with four people down at the bottom side of the map. But they're just losing farm opportunity right now, and even getting pushed back by just a Fiddlesticks and an Ezreal. All the while, Dade is doing whatever he wants in the mid lane, stacking up that tier. And the pink ward control gives them everything from that dragon side down, which they have just taken for themselves. Dade not having too much trouble to farm this in mid. Snowy really doesn't want to give him any trouble either. A level down there at 9 to 8. Kaigu over Dandy by one level, though. Having to be in that lane and soak up all the experience has given him that, but they're not able to go ahead and use this just yet. Looks like Rise. Building up the tier and the Rod of Ages, so it's going to be a long haul if Mineski can make it. You may still yet to buy movement speed, which will make it very difficult for him to dodge any shock blast that Dade throws out once the turret sieging begins. You can see Dade rushed his last whisper there. Yeah. His tier of the goddess is actually at 284 of 750, so it's still got some time. Imps is farther ahead of Dade, he's at 300 of 750 only because he got it so quickly after picking up that first blood in the mid lane and even with his random component set of items the sheen getting procced every time he throws out a mystic shot he's not even that strong with his items but he's still able to push back everyone on Mineski that's how badly Mineski is losing this game and we see Imp's build fitting in a scepter there as well with the sheen so he may still decide to go blue May still decide to go for that Triforce. Looks like it's going to be a fist, though. With that chase coming in from Dade and Acceleration Gate, they'll be able to continue these fights. They have the utility to do that as well. Snoy back against Looper. 8-10 oh, to ten in that lane. Oh, man. Fiddle coming out. Exo goes down from the extended, not extended Ignite, but the running Ignite, as well as TG following after Galaxy Ozone trying, really, just to take this game over immediately. Another Ignite kill as well for Imp, and he's able to take Ignite on Ezreal just because he feels so safe against this Mineski composition. Oftentimes, people would be worried about a Nasus and think they have to bring Cleanse to deal with late game Wither, but 
especially on Ezreal, who's so heavily reliant on spells, and also the fact that Imp thinks this game is going to be over quickly, he's just taking Ignite for the lane kills, and it's totally paying off. And as far ahead as they are, I don't know if he hasn't gone back yet, or is only buying consumables, he has 1,200 on him. So Mata has just been on the map, facilitating that silence utility, as well as the fear to help his team get kills. That The control they have in the wards is just allowing them not to have to go back and buy more, and still, invading the jungle, Ozone, on the aggression. It was a nice Shock Blast steal there by Dada, and yep. it's, it's going a little bit, little bit pear-shaped, not very good right now for Mineski. Imp finishes his Iceborne Gauntlets extremely quickly because all he cares about at this point is just helping the rest of Ozone chase people down for Mineski. Sunfire Cape was completed onto Looper, which means his split push is going to be activated very quickly. He has not been under any lane pressure necessarily. He didn't even have to buy boots yet on Shen. Mineski would have to do something completely amazing yep. to come back at this point because all signs are pointing to a quick and decisive Ozone victory. And I'd be surprised if this did not turn into a pretty big fight here in the next few minutes. It's the last tier, third tier turret that stands for Mineski and no turrets yet down that they have been able to find on Ozone's side. Looks like they could get the fight that they want coming on the bottom side as Mata, but his ult is down, so this is all pretty much going to be what you see in front of you in skill shots. And Imp is making a run up the bottom lane a little bit. If this turns into a poke or a siege war with a blue buff on Jace, there's no way Mineski can hold at this turret. Also, Ryze got caught by Ezreal. Yep, they ping him out. He does go for the Iceborne. He gets that at 15 minutes while double dipping into a few extra builds. He flashes into the wall. The fear connects just after. Unfortunate for you, May. Well, the Iceborne gauntlet rush from Imp is what kind of created yeah, that one. He caught absolutely. them with the Mystic Shot, and it gave him more of a slow than the red buff would have. Then the flash fear over the wall by Matic gave them yet another kill and more pushes on the turrets. All the aggression, they leave the top turret, actually. That's Dade's. He's going to take that himself. They put some mid-pressure down. Nasus is going to be able to spirit fire that. For now, Mineski has a bit of wave clear, but they don't have enough people behind that just spirit fire to stop this. And you can see every time they get just one wave, it's a quarter of the turret's health. Yeah, and if we look at Mineski's team composition overall, it's not, it's not bad. They've just lost the laning phase so badly. They picked a team comp that needs to be engaged in long extended team fights and Ozone is just not granting that to them. They're kind of doing a hit and run with the Ezreal from Imp. Iceborne Gauntlet stops the persistent team fight if Mineski would even want to try it and it's really just leaving Mineski no opportunities. Going in out of Exo, the repel goes up and this is the aggression that they are so sure of. Dandy pretty much telling the team we're not fully fighting. I'm going in to be aggressive, but here comes the stand. United Dandy board very low on mana. He's going to be staying on the outside. Mata goes in for the ultimate. He is focused down very fast. They're looking at Yume now. Eyes onto him. He takes the lantern home. The safety is there, and the ignite will not take him out. Oh, the shock blast just on the tail side there. Looks like they will finish off Snoy. Mata went down after that one, but the rest of Ozone is just going to meander out of the base, losing no one else, and that is just them flexing their muscles right now at Riv. It's an 8,000 gold lead. We cannot say enough about how much Ozone has just dominated this game over Mineski. They caused that switch early game for Mineski. It's something they weren't really able to come back from. The rise in the bottom lane isn't really able to roam and help other lanes. So that's something they lost as well. The first turret went in favor of Ozone, and then it's all defense from there, especially with Nasus being up in the top lane, helping Snowy a lot. They've really just been scattering to stop the chaos Ozone is creating. Yeah, this seems like it's just going to be a mop-up for Ozone for the rest of this one. Oracle's Elixir got picked up on a dandy. Yes, there's a dragon that Kaigu is looking to go and take, but it's a bad idea. This is a bad idea. Get out of there, guys. So they throw it on the pink ward, but they have one in the back as well. A little bit of a sneaky one that may cut off the vision of a pink that comes from Ozone. You see Dade and Imp very ready for a dragon if it comes up. The team has already started it. Exo is just in the mid lane by himself, so no Vayne for this fight. And that Vayne only has a Vampire Acceptor, so it looks like Ozone gets this, and this Kaigu can get himself in. No, it does go to Dandy, and he will not be able to do anything about it. So this will mean, because we got a lot of games coming up today as well, this will mean Ozone, assuming they win this game, yeah. uh, will move to 2-1 and one on the group. And yep. that one loss yesterday, because we got to keep in mind, these are eight game games per team in these groups. Yeah. One loss does not mean the end of the world for Ozone. 
Cannot wait to see. I, I feel like Mineski got trapped in an incredibly close and difficult group right now because Ozone, Gambit, Fnatic, Fnatic and Vulcan yep. are all on an extremely high level. And all those games, actually aside from the Ozone Gambit game, have been pretty close, at least in some point in the game. And Mineski's just not in that class of teams right now. So they would have to do some type of miraculous thing to even take a game in this group. They've definitely changed up their play style a little bit, but it still holds them at a plateau just under where Ozone is. Their pink warding still coming out. The uh, man immune's being finished up here. Boots of Lucidity almost have the same effect and burst coming out of those two champions. Not the same on the Shock Blast, but Dandy, Dandy on the hook here. This may be what Ozone wanted, though. They know they can instantly pick people out, even if it's under the turret. It really isn't there. Looper taking a bit too much damage, but that was his job as the tank. And you can see Dade on the backside singly, single-handedly zoning these guys out till they finally take them down. That was a really sloppy dive by Ozone. They got caught within the turret. This, this is a team that's 10,000 gold up yeah. against Bonescu, who sure was holding there. an extremely dangerous turret that should have been able to get turned around. But Ozone did not get a clean dive. They're going in for round two, though. And that's not the amount of damage you can take if somebody is diving your turret. They do go one for one again, but that's going to be a three-kill shutdown going to Yume. Yeah, this is not the most impressive closing of the game here by Ozone because they were able to jump out to such a huge lead. They still don't have their mana immunes transformed into Mura Manas yet, but giving up that many kills in a turret dive right now isn't the type of play that's going to get them out of this group. We'll see if they're getting a little lax with the lead that they have. It's not something that we usually see from Korean teams. They're still pink warding. Looks like... Spirit Visions almost coming up onto Looper. He'll be able to get that ultimate out more with the Sunfire Cape push, as we were talking about previously. And that's actually, that fight did set Ozone back, but they're not going for something right now. They want to get their lanes pushed and then get back to where they were and hopefully not yeah. make that mistake again in their mind. And I mean, we do have to keep in mind that Mineski has a team composition built around extended fights. The long duration of the Nasus and Renekton ultimates. Right will do a lot of work in long fights. Rise, of course, is not a burst damage caster, but instead needs to rotate his spells multiple times in a team fight to be effective. That's kind of what Ozone let Mineski do in that one, with the slow nature mm -hmm. with which they turret dove. The fight was very long, and Ozone needs to do more to just poke them down because they can do it very easily. Jace plus Ezreal plus even an Elise Cocoon, you land one of those things and you're going to take someone to half health or even worse, and then they can just kind of wear them out. Right. It's not like Mineski has any type of sustain at these turrets. And here we go, it's kind of round two at a different turret. Let's see if Ozone does a little bit more poking and a less sloppy and less sloppy t turret dive. Kaigu standing in front a bit with Snoy there as the Bash Brothers. Kaigu picking up the Locket of the Iron Solari for a bit of that extended fight you're talking about, looking to mitigate a bit of that damage for his team as they're all quite behind. So the burden he is taking on his shoulders. We see Merc Treads coming out on Yume so he can keep himself. Nothing coming from that death sentence, but that now lowers yeah. you know, how much scare is put out here by Mineski. See, there they've taken Exo to below half health, and it just means Mineski has to back off the turret. This is what they need to be doing. Continuously pushing another wave there, mid lane past River. Their bottom lane won't be anything they're looking at right now, so it's either going to be this rotation to mid or the fight they grab here just by constant, constantly pressuring these turrets. And something that we actually don't get to mention that frequently is how well Fiddlesticks works in poke compositions. Because against good teams that can control wards, it's almost impossible to get strong Fiddlesticks ultimates off. But if you're a poke comp, the counter to a poke comp is to go in and fight them. And that's meaning you're jumping into a Fiddlesticks Crow Storm, which is why Mata was really smart to pick Fiddlesticks in this team comp. A five-man group defense cannot stop the damage from going on the turret. They throw down the locket of the Iron Solari. And it looks like they get the, fa the Flash Flay. Fiddlesticks going to walk out of this one, silencing everybody down the line. Mata going down there, and it looks like they may try to turn on this one. Looper goes for the flash. He gets locked up there. DG going to be going down on this one. They keep trading kills back and forth. So far, Mineski on top. You made very low. Can he make it back into the fight to help his team? It's going to be the shots on the Imp. Looper coming in with the ultimate. Tries to get Exo, so the damage can't be done. Kiting very well. Blade of the Rookie keeping Exo alive in the fight. And holy crap, Mineski comes up huge. That is not expected right there. This is a team that is 10,000 gold behind Riv, oh but they are God. catching fights in the right spot. Right now, Ozone is not deciding to fight here. Ryze got so much damage out with his ultimate before that fight began, and then Ozone split. TG made a great play there with the play onto Mata, catching them out. And look, Imp is over the side of a wall. He's not team fighting. Dade was nearly dead before this fight happened, and Ozone should honestly just 
disengaged. They should have used their acceleration gate and ran away because in extended fights, apparently even with 10 to 12,000 gold disadvantages, Mineski can come out on top because Ozone is not using their composition to its strengths. And in team fights, Mineski is. So many kills coming up there. Rise getting the double kill. He was on the ramp up build, but that's going to put a nice amount of gold under him. The Spirit Visage only almost coming out now. He has got himself some good items. But the Mermanas have now been finished. That huge burst of damage to come out from Ozone. In that fight, I don't think could have worked out better for Mineski. I don't think Ozone's going to be fighting in the jungle like that again. I'm actually wondering, because they've been waiting they to get, get those Mermanas for quite a while, and they've been extremely confident in the way with which they're approaching this game, because they know they can hit tab. They can see the item differentials. They know how well Absolutely. they've been out farming. Mata gets hooked again, though, and this is a 5v5 breaking out. Got to remember, Mata went down first in the last fight, too. Mineski keeps it going. Their foot It's on the pedal, and the pedal's to the ground. Kaigu in the front of the fight here, tries to get the wither down. He is going down. They are trying to put a body block for Exo right now. He's not being focused, but they do finally turn their eyes on. It's been a two for one so far. Mineski's looking to have three standing right now. They may not stop. They will not stop, and they keep going going on to EXO. Looper and TG back and forth, and it looks like they'll be able to close off TG in just a few seconds. Yeah, Ace comes back. In that fight, Ozone was actually able to play the disengage properly, and they get the Ace back for themselves. Those were the Muramanas doing their job in that fight for Ozone. Dot A and M doing so much more damage. Now they can push in for an inhibitor, which took them a long time to get here. That was definitely stalled very well by Mineski. They figured out what they needed to do. Like you said, a 10,000 gold fight down, they were able to win. But Ozone put their hard hats on and figured out what needed to be done. The mid fight gave them the inhibitor. Yeah, so in this fight again, you can see Mata went down beforehand, but watch how Ozone this time is more grouped up and trying to kite back as a unit. Looper did the taunt backwards, Imp is using his Iceborne Gauntlet slow effectively, and Ozone is playing within the Jace Acceleration Gate, so they all have that enhanced move speed so that Mineski can't chase onto them with their duration ultimates that do so much damage. Ozone on the run here. They just missed the Iceborne Gauntlet proc onto Yume, but there's a lot of speed coming in. The Repel could Oof. match the distance. It looks like they're just going to be out of range. He goes to the minion as the Cocoon there. Oh my god! They get the fear onto Exo. That spells death, and Ozone now having control of Mineski's base. And they're just gonna keep chasing. They have so much move speed and snare. Going into the base continuously, not regarding the turrets in the top or bottom lane just yet. The bottom lane is quite pushed, but there is enough damage on this top turret. That fight Mineski pressured out previously the Ozone to take it down. It's now a 16,000 gold lead. Ozone, they had a bit of, yep. they had a few hiccups in the middle of this game where they gave up an ace to Mineski, but this has not been a close game really since the start of it, as far as Ozone is concerned. They've been dominating the laning phase. They had a team composition with which they could poke out Mineski and avoid fights. And almost laziness from Ozone, I feel like, stopped them from avoiding the fights right. against Mineski because they thought they were far enough ahead. When it turned out they weren't, Ozone just went right back to the poke. Well, they're getting their wards back out. Everything is real. Just about safety for them. You can see the average times there. 26 and 30. Ozone looking to come up on that 30. Just a few. 22 to 12 is the score. 51 to 34 and a half. They are still chasing. A little bit more focus needs to put other areas for Mineski, but right now, there's not much they could do. No, I mean, both these teams, as we see in the game time stats, play fast games. Yeah. Uh, for different reasons, mostly, though, because Mineski has just been getting beaten very quickly. Mm -hmm. This one, they're doing a bit better of a job staying alive. And Dandy, he's actually baiting a fight here, I think. Ozone is coming in from the back. Yeah, they still have the stand united. I don't know, they do not have it up, but that would have only been the bag of chips for them to get into that fight. They were really bringing down Dade here. You can see him very big now. Actually picks up the Infinity Edge onto Jace. Surprise. There's the party from Mata. He wants to bring it home right now for the team. Will they be able to finish this one? One for one on the fight now is that Yume going down. They turn it back on to Dandy here. Snowy very big. They're getting that percent damage out of the ultimate to the Bass Brothers of Nasus and Renekton. But can they continuously go into the fight? It's just too much damage. Imp is too big and so is the rest of the team as they make their final push into the base. Well, they get four out of five from Mineski right now. This could be inhibitor number three or they're just going to skip it and go for the Nexus. It's about time for Ozone. They've had a lead for a while. Snowy just trying to stop a bit of the damage, but it is going to be a 3v1 and they are gonna have eyes onto him expect that hammer to be dropped 
knocked him back, and it looks like they get up a nice pad on the KDA before they take down the Nexus turrets. Yeah, they drew out this game a bit more than they needed to. They got 11 kills onto him, 6 on Adade. This could be a confidence booster as they move through the rest of the group. Absolutely. Ozone coming into this one quite strong. The fight didn't put him on tilt. They knew what they needed to do. This imp on your screen right there coming up very big with the Ezreal play not going for the Triforce. Yeah, you can see a fairly calm and collected Ozone right there. Looper on the end, not too pleased with his Shen performance there. 5-2 and 13 is his score. Obviously, Mineski has a lot of thinking and planning to do. This is the third game in a row which they have not competed really. There's only one more team in the group that they get their first look against and none of these looks have been very good for them. So now the fans see a different composition of Ozone finally coming mm -hmm. in here, running that singed comp twice. We'll have to see if Looper pulls out anything else for the fans. They're not really trying to keep themselves hidden, but they are using what they need to. Yeah, I mean, they are going back a little bit for Dade. I think he's the one we need to track the most. The different pick coming out from Imp is also very curious because right. Ezreal is not super typical for his champion pool. I basically just think that they were just on a bit of cruise control right here. And yeah. I'm actually surprised they didn't look as crisp as they could have in really trying to make a bit of a statement that they're recovering from yesterday's Gambit loss. Right. They actually still look, if we're comparing them to the other teams in the group, a little bit shaky. And it's actually, if you remember what Mani said, those, those champions that Dada hasn't been able to play because of the changes, he brought that Jace back out. He brought one of those champions out that he's been playing, and it worked out well for him. Mm -hmm. All right, so now let's send it over to Quickshot and the guys at the desk for thoughts on Ozone's Game 1 win. Thank you very much, Riv. Congratulations there to Ozone. Uh, a little messy towards the later mm -hmm. stages of the game. Let's open this one up to the panel and actually talk. Uh, go right back to the picks and bans phase. We've seen Maneski maybe counter-picking a little bit, trying to take some things away from Ozo. What do you think, Monty? Yeah, I'd actually really like to talk about the picks and bans here. I mean, we saw this Singe, Lee, and Zed taken out. They don't want Looper on that. They wanted to see what else he can play. He's only played mm -hmm. Singe so far in this tournament. They took Thresh out immediately as well. That's Mata's best champion. And then going down, uh, the Ezreal pick... It's interesting, and I think we're going to talk a little bit about that later, but what they were doing, actually, is because they were on red side and had last pick, Dada can play that Ezreal in mid lane if necessary. So they were saving it, and they were seeing whether they were going to take a Caitlyn or another, perhaps a mid laner right there, put Imp on Ezreal. They decided to take Jace, but that was to keep their options open for the rest of the draft, because Ozone is one of those teams that really loves to run double AD compositions, but it gives them an out with that last pick as well. So these guys I know had a lot to say about the, yeah. uh, the matchup in the lanes, though. So yeah, We argued a big, uh, bigger to bit back and forth, rather, <laughs> about the Ezreal pick. I actually would have liked to see a Caitlyn more. If they're actually leaning towards the double AD composition with Ezreal and Caitlyn, I would have secured a Caitlyn earlier because I think it's really strong against the Vayne with the Fiddlesticks as well and really strong against the Fresh. You, but uh, Imp, Imp and Mata played really well in mid lane. Uh, they got the, really, the early kill really quick and... Uh, I kind of felt like Mineski could have done more in the mid lane, though the fresh landed a few really good hooks, but the follow-up plays were always in the wrong position. I did, he, he played Fiddlesticks instead of the instead of uh, as well. He one time played uh, Fiddlesticks forward, so the Fiddlestick could escape. They just weren't on point, but there were so many options where they could have. I think abused the fact that they picked Ez into an uh, inferior lane. To be fair, you guys didn't seem like you were happy with either of these duo lanes. Yeah, definitely. So I wanted to touch on Imp and Mata who, uh, you know, their held is really strong. And I think they are the, real, the strongest spot lane in their group, for sure. But their champion pool, you could tell this game, Corky was up, and it, uh, Imp chose to play Ezreal instead of Corky, which to me means because they banned Corky two times and he didn't play it the third time, he doesn't play Corky, which is a big disadvantage to him because he needs to learn to play a counter, Graves, Varus, Ash can do well. There's a lot of skill matchups, but Graves and Varus come to mind as counters. He needs to either play Corky or play the counters. And that's something like he needs to adapt with fast because Corky is going to be big for other teams. Yeah, I think that's a pretty big uh, hole in Ozone's um, strategy right now. That's been exposed very early. <laughs> Was that <laughs> Just leave it right there. <laughs> uh, yeah, global warming is definitely going to be a problem. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, I think that's a pretty big weakness to expose very early. Um, but they also have... You know, Sean Looper does have more than just Singed in his pack, so... So, I want to ask a question now. Let's t take a step back. First of all, uh, Ozone, even though it was slow in the beginning, they did close the game out once they got 
the ball rolling and, and you know, a few misplays here and there. We've already talked about the fact that uh, home in particular, we feel that he may not be as strong on this patch, thanks to some of his champions being nerfed and, and some of the change to the game. We've mentioned that about Dada. We've seen it in action already. We've briefly theorized about Imp. I mean, Corky, this is the first game out of 11. Not picked, not banned. So... Do you feel that Ozone, even though individually they're very strong players, their champion pools may limit how far they can go in this tournament? I, I completely agree. And in fact, this is a, a champion pool that I would have expected to see out of Ozone maybe two or three months ago, back when they were winning Champion Spring in Korea. This looks like exactly how they used to play. And we've seen these double AD compositions fall out of favor a bit because you do have, since the tier nerfs came in, you have a later power spike, a later Muramana, and it's dangerous against a team that has Nasus, Rise, and Renekton because once you hit that massive power spike of Muramana, you have a little, only a little bit of time to take advantage of that before Rise and Nasus and Renekton get so tanky that you can no longer poke them down. So it's risky, and it's been made riskier by the changes to tier because you get that item later. And I also wanted to point out, like, just the fact that Dade and Imp I suppose the loop is new. I expect Dada and him to kind of carry that team and do the damage. Uh, Dada seems to be really easy to ban out and counter pick mid, as you've seen. And Imp, if you ban Caitlyn, he has what? Ezreal and Bane. Those are both bad matchups for Corky. It's just going to be he really hard. Well. But he, oh, he even I didn't. Yeah, I've never even seen him play that yet. Though. He even picked Ezreal into the vein, which kind of surprised me. Yeah, that is uh, as well. Because maybe maybe he has like another answer ready. But it seems that the vein just generally does well against Ezreals. Aside from that, Dada as well. Uh, I, we don't want to make this bash a data show, but he rushed the last whisper really quick on that Jace, and I, I can't but wonder if, if uh, Brutalizer would have been slightly better. Well, I, I just want to expand that a little bit before we start moving on to the next game and, and do a bit of prediction. I think with the fact that Imp, I think he ran Flash Ignite on his Israel and you know some of the item choices, maybe Ozone, maybe not mentally as in this game as we've seen elsewhere. I don't think you can ever say that uh, of course World can't. Final uh, of course should not. always of course be not. mentally but in the game. It, it's something that, you know, after the very strong lead they had early, they, they made some dives that is uncharacteristic that, you know, we, we would see from them. So we'll see how the rest of the games go. They do play a little late today. Let's talk